Welcome back everyone to another video and this month's assets review is going to be split in a couple of videos probably it's going to be three videos because there are two things that I want to uh, create a vid video specifically just for that uh, one asset so uh, today's video is going to be all about the pro instance tools plugin uh, I think this plugin has quite a big potential and it looks quite interesting and it also could save a lot of time and also they are saying that it's very well optimized blah 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 this and that and we're going to have a look at at all of those uh, features and things that they are promising. Uh, now, they have a bunch of different uh, actors uh, that will allow us to create all kinds of different things. So one of the things that you can see on your screen is the path. So uh, let's go straight into it and let's start creating it. Obviously, you will need to install it to your engine and then you will need to enable it in your plugins and then you will need to restart your engine. I've already done that, so I can just go to the Blueprint class and I can look for the instance. And here we have a bunch of pro instance uh, blueprints. So let's start with the path. Let's select that. I'm going to call that path and let's bring this into our level. There we go. So they have this cube by default and you can change it to obviously any mesh you like. On the right side over here, if you scroll down a little bit, there we have the pro instance main settings. Now let's change this up. Uh, I don't have a plank, uh, but what I do have is a palette from one of the free assets packs this month. So I'm going to use that one. There we go. So let me show you real quick how we can make a path out of this. So uh, we have this spline, so we have one dot over here and then we have another dot over here. So what we can do is select the last last dot and then we can hold uh, left alt and drag. There we go. And this will create us another instance. And then again, left alt and drag another instance or we can just simply drag it out till the very end if you if we want. But well, I don't want to drag it fully out because uh, as I need these dots over here so that I can manipulate this road so I can make it like this so I can stretch it out change its shape and all that stuff otherwise if I just drag out one of them well I'm not really going to be able to change the route so uh, let's drag a couple of these out let's make a couple of more dots so that we can actually do something with this spline there we go so I'm gonna move this out just make it random weird path over here it's not gonna make a lot of sense but this video uh, is not supposed to well this road is not supposed to make sense uh, only the assets that are provided are supposed to make sense so we can do that and create a path like this very easily there we go so that was super quick and simple uh, I made a small tiny mistake by moving this up so I'm gonna move this back down or I'm just gonna delete that instance and try it again. Here we go, that was a little quicker. Awesome. Now, there are a bunch of properties that we can change for this. Now, let's start from the beginning. So we have a placement type we can do on the points that we created. So it's gonna add uh, an instance right where the points are that we created, or we can then just simply use the spacing setting and we can provide any value we want. So right now it, it uses 100 units from object to object and we can specify more. So it's gonna have, we are, we're gonna have more spacing in between or we can have less and it's going to create more instances for us. So I'm gonna hit this to be like maybe 10. There we go. And another thing that we can do is we can hit this closed spline and it is going to create us like a loop. So as soon as we hit that, there we go. Now we have a loop over here. So now let's make it look just a tiny bit better by moving this to over here. There we go. So that makes it look a little bit better. There we go. So uh, this was really quick and simple to make this path. It took me just a couple of seconds. Now, obviously, you can use any model you like. So let's not waste a lot of time. Let's go straight into the next class. Let's look for the instance once more. And so we have a circle, which probably makes sense. So it's going to make things in a circle. Uh, what I found interesting was the scatter. So let's look for that. Let's add that to the level. There we go. Uh, I don't have, again, I don't have any meshes, so I'm going to change this to instant static mesh and I'm going to look for, let's find, do we have a rock or a stone maybe from the back? There we go. So we have a bunch of stones. 
which are getting scattered inside of this box right here. So again, just like just like before, we can probably scroll up. Yeah, there we go. And we can change a bunch of things. We can change the number of instances within this zone. Uh, we can change it from a box to a sphere if we want. And then also pivot point corner or center for that thingy. Uh, and then we can change the box size. So let's say we want to have something like 500 by 500, but we want all of them to be on the ground. So we're going to change the Z to maybe like 10. And then we can bring this down. Uh, this one like this. There we go. So now we have a bunch of stones randomly placed on the ground. Now let's see what else we can do. We have the spawn chance. Uh, we had the same thing for that one. So there's a chance we could we could set it like 50-50. So there's only like 50% chance that an actor will spawn. So some of them will, some of them will not. In that case, I'm going to set mine to be like 100. Uh, randomize. We can randomize the scatter as well. So we can change the seed for that. And they're going to get placed differently. Oh, this one seems to be cool. There we go. So that's again a simple cool tool. We can scatter a lot of instances around our world. So let's look for the next one real quick. Again instance and the next one that I like a lot was grid. Let's look for a grid. This one I found really cool. Let's say we are building a hangar or some kind of a warehouse or maybe a bus stop and we need like these pillars that are holding the roof together. That's what I that was the first thing that came to my mind when I when I saw this. So if we look, I have a Okay, so I found some kind of beams. There we go. So we have four of those by default. And again, we can change it to instance static mesh and we can change a bunch of properties. So first and foremost, well, they are probably too close if we are making like a warehouse or whatever. So let's uh, space those out a little bit. So we can again change the spacing. So I'm going to set this to 400 by 400. There we go. And then, well, maybe that's a little too much, maybe like 300 by 200, perhaps. Let's do something like this. And then we can also change the number of instances. So let's set this to be like four, four. There we go. And we can also do this in the levels like uh, floors, one, two, three, four, etc. So we can hit four and it's going to create us a bunch of these. Uh, but that's not what we want. We only want one, one and that's going to be good enough for this example. So as you can see, this tool is really, really cool and it helps development quite a bit because, well, uh, the level design, because it's really quick to do this. As you can see, I have these already here, so I don't have to uh, make sure that I have the correct sizing because the sizing is already provided over here and it's going to make the correct spacing for us. Now, the big question is the performance. So let's go ahead and let's add a bunch of these. So I'm going to do some minor adjustments. I'm going to do like 100 by 100. For these ones so it's a little bit easier for me to space these out i'm going to place these over here and we're going to bump up these numbers quite significantly there we go so i'm going to remove these couple of instances these ones there we go and we are going to place a bunch of these into the level and see how the performance does so I have spawned quite a lot of these. So I have 28 by 60 in the level. The spacing is 100 and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with just by placing these instances, uh, just by placing these meshes on the level uh, by themselves without this actor at all. So this model right here is actually a little bit heavy. It is 11,000 vertices, as you can see, 20,000 uh, triangles. Uh, for this very basic of a model. So that's a little bit of an overkill, but very good for this test because that means we don't have to place a whole lot of these into the level. We can get our FPS down quite fast, especially on my poor graphics card. Uh, it's a little bit older, so uh, it's going to be a good and easy model to test with. So I have the instance type at static mesh. If we hit play, run up, look at all of them. You can see I have 60 FPS. Okay, so we have 60 FPS with this much of those instances and then let's set this to instant static mesh, which confused me a little bit. I was expecting this thing to have a better FPS, but as you can see, this thing right here kills my FPS completely. So that's a no-no. Let's change this to this higher, uh, la, 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 can never pronounce this name, but you know what I mean because you can read it. Uh, so if we change it to that one, as you can see, the FPS is... A couple of FPS is higher, so we can hit like 64 at points, so that's good. But it's roughly the same FPS as with the regular static mesh. Okay, 
So that's just uh, with the grid itself. So now let's go ahead and let's try this with just placing the actual meshes down and that's it. There we go. So I have this exact same amount placed, same exact spacing, pretty much the same location as you can see. The performance different there there basically isn't none it's exactly the same performance so i see no reason why you shouldn't get this plugin and actually use this because this will make uh, the placements a little bit easier a little bit faster a little bit more accurate there's less uh, possibilities for human error and all that stuff so i think that this plugin is a really really good thing and a must have so that's going to be it for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. Uh, it's probably going to come out tomorrow and we're going to review some of the other things that are free for this month. So yeah, thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.